covered. Here are Chuck Bridenstine and Ken Calverly. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the weekend and another edition of Housing Information You Can Trust. How you doing, partner? Not too bad. I'm kind of lonely, though. I miss you. Lonely? What, what do you mean you're lonely? <laughs> We're trying something new, a new format on the Inside Outside Guys today, aren't we, buddy? Yeah, I, I, I decided that uh, proximity to Ken was not a good thing for my health, and I asked him to quarantine at home, so... I'm in Grand Blanc, and uh, where are you today, Ken? Jeez, I'm at I, my I, home studios, my first ever home studios, um, built on the fly, right? So those things behind you that you probably don't even recognize, did your wife go buy a bunch of those to make well, you look educated? Last night, when I found out we're going to be on StreamYard, so that's what we're talking about to everybody, Chuck and I are on StreamYard. Um, Chuck's at the Grand Blanc studio, I'm at my home studio. I found out my bookcase was empty yesterday morning. So I went to Goodwill and my wife helped me. We filled this up with a lot of books to make me look smarter. <laughs> we hung, we hung her, um, her diploma up back there. You know, her degree up back there just to make me look smarter. You so, should have, uh, you know, left all the trophies and every and all the hardware back there. Ugh, ugh, no, <laughs> no, that's that's that. Did you see my text this morning? I sent you and Danielle about the man cave thing. No, you're so not techy. I guarantee Danielle. Got it. My man cave is is just that. It's full of my hunting trophies over the year. I don't think that would play real good in the background, Chuck. Not I'm today's, not going to go there. I, I get it. Not in today's. So all uh, those gerbils that you've shot and had mounted over the years. <laughs> gerbils, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're gonna, we got a good show for people today. I'm, I truly am excited about it. Yes, I am as well. We got a, we got a three-hour show today, buddy. I know it. I know it. We're going to. We're going to be tired, but so be it. Well, yeah, I want to tell everybody at noon, we're going to be running over to the uh, Motor City Floors and Coating Studio and do a show within a show with Max and Rob, the owners that you've met over the past several years with the Inside Outside guys. Great guys, great company, great product. That's going to be a lot of fun at noon. So what do you think? Do Max and Rob remind you of you and I at their age? <laughs> I'm going to insult Max and Rob if I say yes, <laughs> but they are two guys that really have a fantastic relationship. I mean, that's fundamental to their success. They're passionate about what they do. Uh, they try to find fun and joy in what they do. So using those criteria, I would say, yeah, yeah they do fair. remind uh, me of you and I. You know, it's funny because you and I use the term a lot, they're one of us. And we can name so many team partners and so many friends that we just say, you know, they're one of us. And what we might, what we mean by that is if we need them, they'd be there. If they needed us, we'd be there. And, and not just for us, for anybody. That's just the kind of people they are. And that's the kind of people we associate with on the inside, outside guys. Yeah. Let me let people know that they can go to the or WJR's Facebook page and see us talk right now. See our mugs live right now doing the show. I know. I, know. I was hoping Dave and Danielle could do like a Chippendales overlay here. <laughs> that could definitely couldn't hurt. No, no, not at all. You know what? You and I got to check off something on our bucket list, too, in terms of uh, having a uh, team partner added onto the list. This oh, week. I thought you meant my trip to the Grand Canyon a few weeks ago. <laughs> no, you and I. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yes. Huge. Huge, huge news for the inside outside guys. Yeah, something we're really excited about. Should we just say it now or do I'll I do it? Go ahead. Make a wait. Yeah. Everyone, everyone in Detroit, Southeast Michigan knows who Jeff Glover is. Jeff Glover is now the official realtor of the inside outside guys. And most people don't know this. The I've I bought a lot of homes and a lot of properties over the years and sold them, and I just own my house now. And that's the closest I'm ever going to get to being a realtor. Unlike my partner, Chuck, who actually trained realtors. So how many years did you do real estate training, brother? Oh, my gosh. Three and a half, four decades. <laughs> Three and a half, four decades. <laughs> so there's no doubt um, <laughs> you trained so many realtors out there that are just probably, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of sales under your training over the years. Hadn't thought about that. I will, uh, I'll give you the props. You know, uh, Chuck, I, I tell people all the time, and I'm not 
blowing smoke, but you taught me a lot about business and a lot about real estate and a lot about how to interact with people when it comes to business because you and I have said this on the show and I tell people I'm guilty of this. I learned how to be a very good service person. I learned how to lay concrete very well. I learned how to lay brick very well. I, you know, I learned how to do foundations. And then I went, I'm going to open up a business. And I didn't know how to be a businessman. You the classic technician the, come businessman. Yep. It, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I did that. I mean, I did that for 15 years before I met you. Um, and when I did meet you, I was, I mean, you're a perfect example of you can teach an old dog new trick. Cause I met you when I was about 40 years old and uh, you've taught me a lot about that kind of stuff. Thank and, you. And, you know, I'm a sponge when you, when you, when you teach me that stuff, I just want to soak it up and people need to do that as well. Hopefully when they listen to the inside outside guys with ADs experience and when they listen to Jeff Glover come on, because now Jeff Glover is the, uh, the professional in Southeast Michigan. He is. And he's going to be on with us today, right? Yes, he, he is. You were supposed to set that up, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> no, our, our good friend Matt Fritz set that up for <laughs> us. And uh, uh, he'll be on with us in just a little bit. But uh, for people who know, Jeff Glover is one of the top performing real estate agents in Southeast Michigan. And we are absolutely thrilled to have him part of the team. We are. And we'll be talking to him later today and uh, hopefully a bunch in the future. Okay. okay. Are going to take a break already? Already, but when we get back to break, we're going to talk to Rob from Riverview, who has a really cool question. And you're seeing a lot of this, Trucking. As the future comes, we're going to see a lot more of this with the price of lumber. We're going to, People are going to be looking for alternative ways to build housing. And Rob from Riverview wants some advice on 3D printed homes, which is a real thing. You know, something we know how to do today, we know how to build a relatively waterproof basement. But a lot of houses didn't get them. So if your house, your basement is leaking and you need professional advice, Ken and I suggest the sponsor of this next segment, Ever Drive. It's Jeff at Ever Drive Waterproofing. Many of us are still working from home and need additional space. For Everyone out there, there. Uh, we have the, the uh, checking out Facebook, hopefully. Remember, I want if, if anyone's still listening to us or watching us right now during the break, cut us a break, please, because this is the first time we've ever done this. Chuck and I did it <laughs> with the Detroit News a couple of weeks ago. That was really the first time. But to be honest with you, my wife just clicked the button and got me here. I don't know how. <laughs> I can't believe that you did that by yourself. I have to say you're going to be so proud of me. I pushed my own button today. <laughs> here's what hap here's what happens to me i i go to good on stream yard the link that danielle sends us and it takes me to my my uh email says i gotta be on chrome so i click on chrome don't ask me and says i gotta log into uh google email so i do that but i don't know my password now it wants my password my, my, my other password already set so i click on uh -oh. it and it goes now that I'm on a different server, it wants my password. So I had to change my password real quick to get back on here. Ah. My wife did all that for me. Yuck. I hate that. <laughs> Let's see. I'm looking forward to talking to Jeff. I am too. Judy told me this morning when I was chatting with her. Judy Cox? Yeah. Okay. Banks are waiving appraisals. That's unbelievable. She said they can't keep up with it. They know it's delaying transactions. So they're literally delaying uh, the appraisals. And buyers are waiving uh, contingencies for home inspections, which you and I should talk to, maybe talk to Jeff about. I think that's a terrible idea. Uh, even if you, even if it's not a contingency, you sure as heck ought to have one. That's the kind of stuff that got us in trouble in the first place in, in twelve years ago. That um, that scares me. So there's some good conversation whether we do it within the context of the interview with Jeff or afterwards. Right. No, I agree. I agree.
We got Rob from R Riverview about the 3D. Okay. Homes when we get back. Wow, I can stay home and have my coffee pot right there. Don't get used to this. Now, how did that ding happen? I had it all turned down. Okay. Peaks from sun into the afternoon with a high of 62. It will be windy tonight, partly cloudy below 36. Then a sunny and warmer Easter tomorrow with a high of 68. From the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr on News Talk 760 WJR. You have housing questions? The Inside Outside guys on WJR have the answers. Here are Ken and Chuck. Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you being with us on this beautiful Saturday uh, I'm excited for spring, but I got to tell you, Ken, since you and I are doing this remote stuff, <laughs> I probably don't get my chocolate bunny this year, do I? Not for me, you don't. <laughs> that was kind of what I was yeah. hoping for. He'll show, but not for you. Are you talking about the, the Easter bunny himself? No, I was hoping you'd buy me something. Oh, good luck. I'll get the same thing I got you last year. I use that joke every holiday. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I know. It's getting old. <laughs> Getting kind of worn out. Hey, this is the Inside Outside Guys on WJR. Don't forget, during the week, uh, if you need anything, go to the InsideOutsideGuys.com. You are sending us some absolute fantastic emails every day, um, dozens. And we'll go over some of those today and tomorrow uh, just to fill the time up and really let you know how much we appreciate uh, the time you take. And Chuck, we, we love all the compliments people give us. Just keep them coming, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you betcha. Exactly. Also want to direct people to the homestyle section of the yep. Detroit News yesterday. Our, our article about mulch, we believe, will uh, provide a lot of information for you. And it's supposed to be such a nice weekend. Maybe if you got family and friends coming over, you, uh, you know, kind of put everybody together, give them rakes and shovels and get your mulch done. While I buzz there and then offer to feed them afterwards. That's what I, I got my all my mulch out this week, Tuesday. Spent the whole day, Tuesday or Monday. Spent the whole day getting the mulch out of there, um, shoving on top of the tarp, walking the tarp out to the woods, dumping all the mulch. And uh, What did you put down? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. I will. I uh, went after the weeds. Once I got all the mulch down, I went after and killed all the individual weeds I saw because they're already starting to come up. I don't know oh, if, yeah. if that's a testament to... The good weather or how lousy a gardener I am. Um, they're already starting to come. They're already starting to come up. So our daffodils uh, came out first part of the week and they are beautiful. That frost uh, didn't treat them kindly, but they were pretty. Yeah. We have a lot of our hostas and everything else starting to poke up and we're excited about it. It's going to be a fun year. Hey, let's go to the phones and let's talk to uh, Rob from Riverview and uh, let's talk about some alternative home methods, but I never thought we'd be talking this brother. Rob, you there, buddy? Yes, I am. Happy Easter to you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Well, thank you. My question is, see, I'm going to be retired in three years, and I wanted to plan, I wanted to move up north, and the cost of housing and lumber is just skyrocketing, and I saw these 3D printed houses. They show them on YouTube, so I watched all the videos. I contacted like three different companies and tried calling them. None of them get back with me. Is this a viable thing you could do in Michigan? Because I don't know if it's true or it's just on their videos about how they build. But they were showing where they could build a family's house for like four to five thousand dollars with this three D printing. Uh, this Is that realistic in Michigan, or was that just a uh, smoke and mirrors? 
Rob, let me tell you, this is really cool, this stream here. I hope people are watching because I can see my partner just like he's in front of me shaking his head no. <laughs> and uh, go ahead, but I'll let you I'll let you start, but I know where you're going to go. And it, Rob, it is a great question. It's, 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 re it's really yes. a sign of the economy that we are in right now. Go ahead, Chuck. It is. And uh, to answer the initial question, is it viable today? No. Um, the, the technology has been there on a larger scale to use 3D printing to create uh, effectively concrete homes, uh, lightweight concrete homes. Uh, the price point you mentioned is a total deception. Uh, that is not going to happen. I don't think ever, quite frankly. Uh, it just it, there's just no way. I mean, the materials, regardless of, of how they how it was done, whether it's concrete or another material, could not be purchased for the you know for the price you're looking at there. Um, they have usually set these up in as prototypes where they're building, uh, replicating multiple uh, homes with the same floor plans. And they literally will put these machines on a rail, like a rail gantry, uh, like yeah. you see in the uh, large shipping yards. And the machine will literally move over the top of the ground that has been prepared and, and construct a house, it, uh, at least most of it. And then it'll slide down the gantry and do the same thing on an adjoining lot and then just keep doing that. But those are not going to be cheaper. I, I, I just don't see that happening. Well, well, and let me add to that. Uh, like any new technology, when they first come out, it's not going to be cheaper. And not just that, but you don't want to invest in the newer tech. It's like going out and buying a brand new off the line, the first one model vehicle. A lot of people don't like doing that. We wouldn't suggest doing that. We want it to be out for a while and let the, the bugs all work its way out. Um, the 3D homes, you really, I don't even know, Chuck, if you may be able to find one or two out there within driving distance that you could go look at, but it's such a new thing. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't touch it. That's, that's where I'm at with it. I don't think the one-off thing is ever going to be, I can, well, I shouldn't say ever. Is not. I don't think the one-off thing is going to be economical for a long time. Yeah, I, I think any economies will be where you have the floor plans duplicated, like you would in in any large, you know, uh, subdivision. But even, I mean, here's the thing: even if they print the house, there's still so much man labor that goes into it afterwards. For oh, absolutely. Labor, for, for, I mean, it's it, it's a part of the building process putting that shell up. The rest of it is just as big as part. And that still costs the same, if not more. Yeah. And, and I hearken back to, you know, the much smaller scale. We did some 3D prototyping when I was with the college years ago. They set up a beautiful little lab. And the reality is you still have to buy the materials for anything. I, I don't care if you're making a little plastic, you know, key fob with it's a 3D work. printer. You still have to purchase the materials and the materials aren't cheaper because of the technology you're utilizing. Rob, does that all make sense to you? Okay. Yes, it does, it, you know, because they'd always show where their their dream would be to build, well, you know, single person homes for people that don't have much money. And they showed where they built a whole row of them, like you were saying. They said, oh, we built this for only so many thousand dollars. I'm going, holy shit, maybe I could have a nice house <laughs> in my retirement <laughs> and, you know, live out in the woods by myself with my dog and just be happy. And, you know, and now you broke my dream. So basically, <laughs> I mean, it, you well, know, we be mobile home in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you could 100 percent do a 25 by 25 um, slab on grade home, build out a concrete block, unless you would be able to do that um, 3D printed house at this point. You agree, Chuck? I do. Um, and it's interesting, this kind of creates a digression in and of itself, because if you're going to do that, and it's going to be a permanent structure, and it's going to be legal, then you're going to find out that all the code compliance issues are going to make that house more expensive than, than you were hoping, uh, Rob, just because you will have to conform with the energy code and the mechanical codes and, and, and those things. Great question. Rob, hopefully we answered your question, but there are going to be a lot more new technologies coming up in the future on uh, for, for the building. You agree, Chuck? Yeah, I agree, big time. You know, you know go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, we see some of that technology even in the products and materials for roofing. 
where companies are using integrated systems now to put a shingled roof on for 40 or 50 years. 40 or 50 years, they give it a lifetime warranty. Um, you know, companies that come out and do it right from point A to point B, whether it's there or replaced. What are we talking about, Chuck? Turn, brothers. Hi, I'm Mike Kearns from Kearns Brothers. My brother Gary has advised me that cute, talking little animals are in as... Cool. Yes, cool. So, <laughs> I know Dave and Danielle are listening to us, and this is brand new, so I might as well say it right here. Um, at the end of, when we're going to the break, that music seems to get a little bit too loud, that Chuck almost has to, to shout, or I have to shout. Is there a way to keep that down? I know that's probably your way of telling us we have to hurry up. Um, can you guys hear us? Nope. Nope. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do it over the text. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, Jeff Glover on the phone? Not sure. Gotcha. Okay, what was the question? Hang tight. We're going to uh, put you on hold, and we'll get you on right after the uh, bottom of the hour news here, okay? Okay, Jeff is there, and then what did you ask? Um, as we're going to the break, are you going to hurry up? Or does it automatically get higher as we as as we go? Because it goes up slightly. Can we? Because it really, we have to, it's loud. No way to stop that, or we just have to talk louder. Ah, uh, it like when I when it starts, it's loud. No, when it starts, it's nice, nice sound. But like it's get, gets higher as we're going. It, it's like you're telling us to hurry up. I don't know if that happened on purpose, but almost so loud we can't hear it. I mean, it only goes up to like okay. Well, I just won't fade it up as high then. Perfect, perfect. Um, so, how many people? How, can you tell how many people we have watching us? Uh, Twenty-five. 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 Mm -hmm. Interesting. You got a comment too. Okay. Um, we'll put it up there. It's, it's for your guest. It's for Jeff Glover. So. Okay. Um, okay. He's got a – the caller says, good show, guys. Can you ask Jeff about buyers overbidding by insane amounts, like 20 to 30%? Absolutely. Here, you can see on the bottom of your screen. There's your there, – there, there's who it is. No, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. I like this. This is great. I know. So did we, did we lose Greg from Shelby Township? That's Mr. Positive. He's going to have to call back after Jeff Glover. You guys want to tell him? We'll tell. I'm going to tell him and Tim to call back later. Thank gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're All right. Jeff Glover. Yeah, Judy told me in Lennon, Michigan, Ken, a buyer bid $50,000 over the price of a quarter million dollar house. Did he get it? Yes. Okay. My neighbor across the street said one of her clients just bid 30000 over and didn't get it. It's crazy. It is crazy. I think we need to sell our houses and go rent something. That's that'd be your option, but the problem is you got to be able to find something to rent too. <laughs> I mean, if you would have done that in 2007, you would have killed it. Oh, my uh, a gal I work with at Dort Federal Credit Union, she and her husband sold their house a year ago and moved into an apartment, and they're just socking away cash. I told Maria last night that would be the best business move we could make. And she says, so you want to move? And I went, no. <laughs> yeah. Business-wise, it could be, but I don't want to move. Yeah. Jeff's got a, um, a uh, link on his site that says, find out what your Michigan home is worth. And you click on it. I like that. There's no way we can um, control the the swearing, obviously. I know it. Yeah, I mean, that's the first time that's happened in a long time, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. You chastise him, though. You can be the dad. You be the bad guy. <laughs> Cut that crap. Yeah, use the C word. It's better. <laughs> Oh, remember Connie Morbach? Yes. Road. There's some heavy stop and go traffic going southbound 275 between the M14 I-96 exit and 696. Also in Detroit, if you're headed eastbound 8 Mile Road, construction has the right lane closed between Evergreen and Southfield Road. I'm Lorenz, WJR Traffic and Weather First. <laughs> It will be a cloudy start to this Saturday, then some sun will break through at times during the afternoon with a high of 62. It will be windy overnight, partly cloudy with a low of 36, then a sunny and warmer Easter to wrap up the weekend tomorrow with a high of 68. From the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr on Newstalk 760 WJR. Here for you today and every day, this is the Inside Outside Guys on WJR. Here are Chuck and Ken. Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you being with us this Saturday morning. Hopefully, everybody's going to have a nice familial weekend where you can enjoy family and friends and maybe take some time to reflect. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because by any chance, if you're not able to or you're at home and you know a neighbor that might be alone, invite them over. At least call and ask. Let them know that you care. Um, for people, I mean, Chuck, I could see you and I. I know a lot of people are listening that had family at one point. And they've lost them over the years. And they spent these holidays with family. And being alone is never good on a holiday. So, I agree. Um, if you get a chance to make someone's life better by giving them a call or inviting them over, we ask that you do that. We'll do the same. Talk about making life better. You and I have always said real estate is too big a risk, too big an issue to ever trust to doing it yourself or using anyone less than an experienced professional. You're right. We're not a DIY show. We say that all the time. And that comes from nailing trim, which I'm not a DIYer for that, <laughs> to actually selling property. And um, I mentioned this earlier that most people don't know that that Chuck Bridenstein, you taught real estate training for decades. You're an absolute expert in the subject. And we got another expert in Michigan, probably the biggest out there. Um, Jeff Glover from Glover and Associates is with us. How you doing, Jeff? Hi, Jeff. Hey, good. How's it going, guys? Well, not as busy as you are, I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> it is absolutely, it's, it's, what, what a difference a decade makes, huh? Oh, my gosh, yeah. It's been absolutely nuts, really, um, you know, the last five years, but really since the pandemic, we've seen um, quite, a, quite a change in the way business is done, that's for sure. You know, it's funny, Jeff, uh, Ken and I, 13 years ago, were talking about a study done by the National Association of Home Builders about 10 years prior to that, that said at that time, we had a housing shortage in this country. And of course, because of all the economic issues we've seen, uh, we have never, ever solved that housing crisis. And you're seeing that manifest now, right? Yeah, you know, in my uh, this may will be 19 years, and um, the we can't keep anything on the shelf. Uh, I, I thought it was a big deal a couple of years ago when I saw for the first time uh, inventory drop below 15,000 homes for sale in Southeast Michigan, and now we're below 10,000 homes available for sale in the uh, Metro Detroit MLS. So that's 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 pretty extreme. Give us Which some context for that, that, Jeff, because the listeners hear that number, and it still sounds like a lot of houses. Yeah. 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 So uh, in comparison, say when we were at the bottom of the market, when you you could turn any corner and, and see how, you know, for sale signs, we had over 100,000 homes for sale in Southeast Michigan. Um, at any given time in an average market, you know, take, take 2014 or 2015 or even 2003, 2004, 2005, which were, were very good markets. You know, some people say, uh, people thought for a long time we would never get back to 2005 pricing right before the crash. And, um, even in 2005, we were, we had about 25,000 to 30,000 homes for sale at any given time. And, um, today we have less than 10,000 available. 
And Ken and I were optimists throughout that entire period. We, we truly believed because we knew there was a shortage that prices would come back. And it was just a question yeah. of how long it would take to get there. And it's happened kind of quickly, hasn't it? Yeah, and, and it's 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 a bit unfortunate depending on what side you're on, uh, because you know even for a seller selling who says, "Man, I, I can get uh, you know more equity today than than I've ever had in my house," um, that's great. But when you turn around and buy, you're you're definitely <laughs> you know it, it, you feel a bit of of a uh, bit of a pinch there, and then in that you know you're you're probably overpaying. Hey Jeff, here's a question. Um, have there been any more opportunities because all the house is off? We, I mean, Chuck and I were just talking at the break. I mean, I know someone that bid thirty thousand over didn't get it. Chuck knows mm-hmm. someone yeah. that bid fifty thousand over asking price and they got it. Um, and obviously, mm-hmm. those are very expensive homes at that point. Is there any, with this kind of um, economy? Are there any more opportunities for say the the lower price housing um, for fixer uppers if people are interested in fixer uppers? Yeah. Um, are those yeah, so any more? Yeah, a couple things on that. So, so first things first. Uh, you know, we're seeing twenty or thirty thousand over at the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar price point. So, you know, it's it's not just the half a million dollar homes that are going for thirty or forty thousand dollars over. Uh, we just had a we just had a ranch in Livonia that was listed at two and a quarter that went for two sixty. So, you know, it 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 uh, it doesn't have to be just the high end that's getting twenty, thirty, forty thousand over asking. In terms of the the fixer uppers, though, um, there there is a, a little bit of an inventory on those because they don't show as well, um, or, or they are uh, priced a little high for their condition. So, you know, if there is somebody who's willing to do a little bit of work, you're you're probably still going to have competition. There's no doubt. Um, I'm thinking of one we just listed in in Canton that you know hasn't been touched since probably the 70s, and there's definitely multiple offers on it. Um, but there, we're not going to have 20 or 30 offers, and we're probably not going to get 20 or 30 thousand over asking, but we're still going to get over asking. How about the uh, issue of bank appraisals, Jeff? We're hearing that banks are actually starting to waive appraisals in some transactions. Well, it depends on the borrower. Uh, if if they've got a you know if 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 they've got great credit score, if they're putting a, a certain amount down on the home, uh, yes, we're seeing situations where some banks, depending on the program, uh, they're not they're just not they're just simply not requiring an appraisal on the house. And um, you know this doesn't feel anything like it did in two thousand five two thousand six, <laughs> but there there is. There is some talk of, you know, the banks start doing things like that. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people that are upside down in their houses three to five years from now. That's what we're wondering about. And then how about the idea of buyers waiving contingency like inspection? Uh-huh. Yeah, so we're not we 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 are not fans of that. Uh, we don't recommend that. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that is sometimes what it's taking to get an offer accepted. So what we suggest is is kind of somewhere in the middle of completely waiving an inspection uh, versus doing a full blown inspection and asking for repairs. And that is, you you let the seller know if you're a buyer, you let the seller know that you're only doing your inspection for informational purposes. It is uh, contingent on inspection, but you're as soon as the inspection's over within 24 hours, you're giving them a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and that's it. Uh, so you're not you're not using the inspection as an opportunity to negotiate, which is usually, you know, what happens after an inspection. You always find something. Makes so do you, do you see the market <laughs> slowing down, or do you think we're on a continued acceleration until something weird like inflation or the cost of money changes? Yeah. Yeah. So great, great question. So every year at this time, by the way, no matter what's happening in the market, um, you know, January 1st to say uh, May 1st, we always experience, um, you know, low inventory, buyers wondering if they're going to be able to find something that fits their needs. And that's just general uh, tradition, if you will. You know, it's tradition in most Midwest markets, including Detroit, that you don't list your home for sale until, you know, the flowers are blooming until until late spring, early summer. And so we normally have a little lower inventory this time of year. And that that is, you know, of course, what what helps the prices continue to go up. But I do believe, um, aside from some increase in inventory that we'll see, it's going to take interest rates maybe perhaps increasing uh, before we start to see it maybe go the other way. You know, I wouldn't 
I, I wouldn't um, be disappointed if if we saw interest rates get into the mid mid threes or high threes because it'll certainly soften things up and make things a little more palatable for buyers. Well, isn't it amazing that we're talking about something in the threes being a high interest rate? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, four a four percent interest rate would shock the system. We haven't seen four percent in probably six or seven years. Jeff, I am so old. Shut up, Ken. <laughs> Give me a chance. Back in eighty one, we saw fixed rates at twelve percent. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I hear all about it from all from all the all the old time realtors when I sit across the closing table with them. <laughs> yeah, well, Jeff, from everything you just said a minute ago, um, sounds like the real estate season coincides with construction season. Um, mm -hmm. If so, if I'm at home and this, here's something that happened to me for many years, I'd go to a, a customer's house and they'd say, um, "We're thinking about selling in a couple of years. We want to get this done. We're thinking about selling in a couple of years." Yeah. What What would you say to that person as far as what they can do to make their house um, more palatable for sale? Yeah. And should they wait a couple of years? Should they put their money in their house before they sell? What advice do you have? We may not have a time, enough time to finish that question in this segment. You stick around. We can finish it in the next. Sure. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, first thing yes. first. You yes. know, you, go ahead. Let me cut, I'm yeah. sorry. I had to cut you off because as soon as I said it, the music started, which means we're going to go to a break. <laughs> And if we can answer that question, we get back from break. That'd be awesome. And one other quick thing. I want people to go to GloverAssociates.com. And you have yeah. a link on your site that says, what is your Michigan home worth? That's invaluable. I want people to check that out. This next segment of the Inside Outside Guys brought to you by a quality, trusted plumber. We refer all the time. And that plumber is Z Plumbers. <laughs> Z Plumbers isn't your average plumbing company. They're Hey, bud. Sorry to mean to cut you off there. I just wanted to get out. Get out. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure we save enough time to, to set these ads up well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know you went to Z Plumbers, so I just was trying to shut up. Oh, you didn't see that text I sent a little while ago. You told me that earlier. You know, I had to confirm Motor City for, for today. Gotcha. And, okay. Uh, Cool. I think I mean I think this is going good. I like I it. Know. Oh. I know. Oh, look at the, do you see the screen below us there, bud? Bushman. Bushman. That guy Pat Bush, Daniel. He's our he's our buddy. Chuck's known him since grade school, and he's come on and do the show with us quite a bit. I remember the time that you had to go to a wedding, and we were supposed to be at the home show the next Saturday, or was it your aunt's funeral? If I remember that right, and you couldn't miss it. And I caught the flu that night, and they took over for us. Thanks, Mike Pierce. Wow. I do now that you say that. Yeah, Mike or um, Pat and Lee went to the home show and took over for us. Hey, I'm going to go get a, I'm gonna go get my vest on. I'm getting chilly here. Seriously? Yeah, or I could turn up the heat, I guess. But Yeah, it's your house. <laughs> <Wonder it. laughs> Excuse me.
We've already talked about mulch yet. <laughs> so next sponsor is Bratcher. Due to an accident at Warren, northbound the lodge, there's another accident along the left <laughs> shoulder at Telegraph Road. If you're going southbound 275, there's some heavy stop and go traffic between the M14 I-96 exit and 696. And if you plan to be downtown Detroit this afternoon around Comerica Park, the Tigers are hosting the Indians. Expect heavier traffic. First pitch is at 1.10 p.m. I'm Lorenzo Ware, WJR Traffic and Weather First. <laughs> After a cloudy start to the Saturday, there will be a few breaks in the clouds later today with a high warming to 62 as winds increase out of the south. Partly cloudy tonight with a low of 36, then a sunny and warmer Easter tomorrow with a high of 68. From the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr on News Talk 760 WJR. Find professional contractors you can trust at InsideOutsideGuys.com. Now, once again, here are Ken Calverly and Chuck Bridenstine. Good morning, and Jeff everybody. Glover. And Jeff Glover, yes. Welcome back to the Inside Outside, guys. I want to remind everybody, between the noon and one hour, the guys are going to head over to Motor City Floors and Coating Studio and talk to Max and Rob and, all, and talk to them about all their fantastic technology that, without a doubt, saves homeowners thousands of dollars um, to repair instead of replacing their concrete. Fair to say, Chuck? Absolutely. That's an exciting product, an exciting company. And I got, uh, yeah, I'll wait till 12 o'clock to talk about it. But yes. <laughs> well, I want to know that we are going to be there with us right now is Jeff Glover from Glover Associates. And you can check out gloverassociates.com. Jeff was uh, uh, kind enough to join us here today. And uh, we're doing something a little bit different. We're on StreamYard today. At Chuck and I are two different locations. I'm at home and Chuck is at the normal Grand Blank Studios. You can check us out at the WJR Facebook page. You still with us, Jeff? Hey, hey, yes, I am. And also, I should tell you guys, it's it's JeffGloverAssociates.com, not Glover Associates. That's okay, though. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's for okay. <laughs> no, that's all right. People nowadays yeah. would probably just Google it anyways, but I figured I'd point that out. Yeah, no. no we appreciate hearing we it. Do, we do. Thank you. Thank you. you know, Jeff, how about a little background on, on your company before you answer the questions Ken gave you before break there? Well, um, let's see. I've been in the business now. This May will be 19 years, and um, I have been uh, listing and selling over 100 homes a year myself personally in the last 11 or 12 years. And we've got a team really spread out across Metro Detroit uh, from the east side to the west side, and we do between 900 and 1,000 home sales per year, which puts us uh, number one in the state of Michigan for most volume sold. And uh, puts us probably top top five or ten in, in the entire United States for uh, for units sold. So like us, Jeff, um, you are a housing expert. You're, you're obviously obviously a uh, expert in the real estate industry and can't even tell people how many thousands of homes you've probably been in. And we had a call a little while ago, ask us a quick question about a gentleman asking about 3D printed housing. Are you seeing yeah. in the industry, are you seeing um, – any alternatives, especially with all the building people can't find anyone? Are you hearing about any trends out there of alternative buildings 
building happening? Yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not seeing we're not seeing too much of that. Uh, at, at least here in Metro Detroit, you know, we're we're seeing uh, different types of architecture and and buyers maybe going for a different style than they were originally intending on, just because inventory is low. But um, no, we're not seeing a uh, uh, any any okay. sort of three D printed houses, uh, at least in a mass quantity. That was that was for the caller earlier. Before we went to break, I asked you about on your website. You have a fantastic link um, for is just for Michiganders, basically, for they can know what their house is worth at this time. Can you talk about that for a second, please? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, no, you can go to Jeff Glover and Associ- Jeff Glover Associates dot com, all one word, Jeff Glover Associates dot com, and um, you can plug in plug in your information, you know, bedrooms, bathrooms, and so forth, and um, get a get a rough estimate. And obviously, if you want a deeper estimate, you know, we can do a consultation over the phone uh, via Zoom or FaceTime or in person. Okay. All right. Perfect. And how about virtual or virtual tours, Jeff? Yeah, they're still they're still taking place, you know, um, they're 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 not as common as they were when we were in the middle of pandemic, but we're definitely still seeing uh, some buyers do the virtual, uh, you know, preliminary search before they get out and see them. But I, I would say for the most part, we're, we're pretty back to normal. Uh, you know, obviously buyers are wearing, uh, masks and, and, um, we're, we're not allowed a certain, you know, more than a couple households in a house at a time. So open houses, as you can imagine, can be a little bit of a challenge. Everybody's got to wait outside, but for the most part, the home showing process is, is, is pretty much back to normal. Jeff, you've so, obviously found a way to do this well for people. What what are some distinguishing characteristics of JeffGloverAssociates.com when people are looking to hire a professional realtor? Well, I would say probably one of the biggest ones is, especially for your for our home sellers out there, is marketing. Uh, you know, most agents are either unfortunately not selling enough homes to have a marketing budget, uh, a sizable marketing budget, or are, you know, deciding to maybe keep the commissions for themselves. Uh, we, we, we spend a, uh, quite a bit on marketing and that's all designed to drive traffic to our site or to our phone number, which is, you know, eight, five, five Jeff sells or, um, you know, to traffic to our listings. I mean, that's, that's the biggest differentiator when a seller hires us, uh, the number one feedback you'll read online about us and and the success we have with sellers is, Hey, we had more traffic than we ever imagined. Or even we had more traffic with, with Jeff and his team in the last, you know, two, three weeks than we had in the last 30 or 60 days with their previous company. So that, that's probably the biggest difference the, 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 the mass marketing that we do. It's not just local, uh, and, and, uh, or even regional. I mean, it's, it's really statewide. You know, if we've got somebody who has a, uh, you know, a home to sell in Sterling Heights and they're moving to Grand Rapids, I mean, we, we can help them on both ends. We've, we've got coverage in both markets. Have you found a way to gain efficiencies with buyers too? Because it used to be get in the car. We're going to show you a hundred houses today. You Boy, I bet in 19 years, how much you've seen change in just the 19 years? Yeah, no, there, there, uh, there, there's definitely not enough homes to say get in the car. We're going to see a dozen <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, you know, it's usually, it's usually no more than three to five at a time. But uh, most buyers do quite a bit of the research online nowadays, so they know a lot uh, going into the houses before they even see them. Hey, Jeff, real quick, I. I because we don't have much time left, but I asked you before the break, what can a homeowner do now if they're thinking about yeah. selling in a couple of years? Yeah, the improvements. Yeah, so you you don't want to do things like uh, completely gut and, and and renovate your kitchen and bathrooms. You're you're just not simply going to get a full return on that. You'll get some return, but not a full return. Uh, the 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 three or four best things you can do: fresh paint, um, replace your carpets, uh, update update your flooring. Um, you know, change your hardware, change your light fixtures. You know, a lot of times I go into a house and, and, you know, they might have a 1990s white kitchen, which actually the white is back. Uh, but you can change your hardware and you can change the light fixtures. You can change the paint color to make that kitchen substantially updated and not have to pour a ton of money into it and get a great return. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on with us today. People are going to be hearing so much more about Jeff Glover and JeffGloverAssociates.com. We really appreciate you coming on today, buddy. Thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. You bet. Thank you very we much. We appreciate you. Very, very much. This ne- next segment brought to you by Bratcher Electric.
Imagine having to work at home with no lights, no TV, and no internet, all because of no power. This problem can be solved with one phone call to Bratcher Electric. Bratcher Electric can install a backup generator for your whole house to give you the power that you need. They handle all of the major brands and will assist in getting the right size generator for your home or business. Contact Bratcher Electric now and get your generator before you are left in the dark. Are you there? Call our partners at EJH Construction. EJH has earned our trust here at WJR, and they will earn yours too. For over 50 years, property owners have trusted EJH in emergencies. The experts at EJH will guide you through the entire process from the moment you discover property damage until you move back in. Call EJH 1-800-854-4534 or visit EJHConstruction.com. Let North Bloomfield Properties find the best home for you and your family. Not just a place to stay, but a home where you and your family will want to live. Our select top homes in the area, inspected and maintained for your safety and comfort. Property owners love us too. We only provide pre-screened quality tenants. Plus, we handle all work involved in owning yep. investment homes. Right, That's thanks. why we've earned an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. We specialize in putting good families in good homes. Contact us today, northbloomfield.com. Aliens have landed on Earth, leaving a stunned human race to wonder why. They want our water. <gasps> They're going to eat us just like cattle. <gasps> they probably want my genetic information. Ew. Wait, we can translate the language. They've mastered space travel, done away with hunger, sickness, war. They live forever, but they don't understand how Kearns Brothers can maintain such a high level of quality. I'm Mike Kearns from Kearns Brothers. Go to KearnsBrothers.com. And they don't want that gentleman's genetic information. Ew. Are you sick and tired of tripping over your uneven sidewalk? <coughs> or clearing snow off your unlevel driveway? Call A1 Concrete Leveling and Foundation Repair. They're the preferred contractor in this area for the Inside Outside Guy Show. A1 can level almost any concrete, including porches, patios, and garage floors. Plus, they offer competitive warranties on all of the services. A1 Concrete Leveling and Foundation Repair has been in business for 27 years, so call them today at 800-538-3514 or visit a1concrete.com. It's Niall Sheena with Window World, the nation's largest replacement window company. For 25 years, Window World has been committed to providing homeowners with high-quality windows and doors at a guaranteed low price. Locally, my family, the Sheenas, stand behind that promise 110%. Call us today at 1-800-NEXT-WINDOW for a free quote and take advantage of 0% financing for 60 months with no money down. Or visit our showroom on Haggerty Road in Commerce or online at windowworlddetroit.com. While serving in Iraq, an IED took both my legs, but it didn't take my spirit. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Greg Gatson, Army veteran. DAV helps veterans and their families get the benefits they've earned. Today, I'm an entrepreneur, photographer, and public speaker. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories great and small. My victory is just being the best that I can be. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. The hot weather's coming. Is your air conditioner ready? Colonial Heating and Cooling, one of the Inside Outside Guy's preferred contractors, is offering a full preseason air conditioning inspection for just $99.95. Let's make sure your air conditioner's in top shape. Colonial can replace it with a high-efficiency Coleman air conditioner if you need a new one. Don't wait for the season's first heat wave. Call Colonial Heating and Cooling now at 734-455-6500 or visit colonialhc.com. WJR Detroit and WDVD HD2 Detroit, the great voice of the Great Lakes, 760 WJR, where Detroit comes to talk. Major League backlash to Georgia's new voting laws. I'm Pam Puso, Fox News. This bill does not suppress anything. Republican Governor Brian Kemp is blasting Major League Baseball for pulling this summer's All-Star game out of Atlanta. They're very upset about this. They're upset for their fans and their small business owners that are at the Battery at Truist Park that were looking forward to having, you know, big crowds at the game, patronizing their small businesses. That's who this is going to hurt. Last week, the governor signed a bill overhauling state election law that he claims expands voting opportunities. Opponents say it's nothing more than an attempt to suppress Democratic votes. 
Your sympathy is appreciated beyond words. That was part of a tweet posted this morning by U.S. Capitol Police. The agency left reeling again by another deadly breach. For the second time this year, a U.S. Capitol Police officer is dead after defending the United States Capitol. Police say William Billy Evans, an 18-year veteran of the force, died after a suspect plowed a blue Nissan over him and another officer guarding the Capitol. Fox identifies the suspect as 25-year-old Noah Green. Green then rammed the car into a security barricade and lunged at officers with a knife. Fox's Chad Pergram, the suspect, was killed by responding officers. A human rights group in Burma says since the military takeover in February, at least 550 civilians have been killed. Pro-democracy protesters take to the streets every day. City dwellers are leaving Paris in droves ahead of new coronavirus restrictions that take effect tomorrow across France. At French hospitals, extra staff is being brought in for the Easter weekend to cope with a crush of new COVID-19 patients. America's listening to Fox News. Hey, it's Brett Larson, inviting you to download and listen to the new daily Fox on Tech podcast. There's part of a colorful late 90s iMac on Mars. It's an idea that seems a lot like Kickstarter called Build It. This isn't the first time we've heard about North Korea hackers trying to get a leg up on COVID-19, a range that was used for satellite TV service in the 70s. Get the latest trends in technology, cybersecurity alerts, and gadget news daily. Subscribe and listen now by going to foxnewspodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Connect to Fox News Audio on the Fox News app. Listen to hear your favorite hosts like Brian Kilmeade, Jimmy Fallon, and Guy Benson standing up for what's right live and via podcast. Just click listen, then swipe right and hear the latest news updates on your time. And scroll down to hear the latest podcasts from Fox News. And it's even easier to listen in the car with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Get programming alerts and notifications. Fox News Audio is on the Fox News app. The Voices America Trusts. Download it now. An American citizen is dead. Another is unaccounted for following a railway disaster in Taiwan. 50 people were killed and more than 175 were injured when a truck with no one inside rolled onto a train track yesterday. Prosecutors are seeking an arrest warrant for the owner of the truck. The government says the vehicle's emergency brake wasn't properly set. Cyber insecurity as hackers gain access to private information. The University of California is warning students and staff that a ransomware group might have stolen and published their personal data, as well as that of hundreds of other schools, government agencies, and companies nationwide. The university says a cyber attack targeted a vulnerability in a third-party vendor it used to transfer files. Carmen Roberts, Fox News. Despite rising cases of the coronavirus in more than two dozen states, many Christians are planning to attend Easter Sunday Mass in person. As houses of worship reopen, a new Pew survey shows 76% of churchgoers say they feel somewhat or very safe to return to in-person services. That's up from 64% last year. Still, it will be another atypical holiday season for most, as many houses of worship keep their online presence Fox's Lauren Green. No matter what your plans are tomorrow or where you are, the weather should be dry. What will vary is the temperature. In the east, it's still chilly. We have freeze warnings in effect again. We got another cool day today, another cold night tonight, and then tomorrow's things start to improve. And overall, I think our pattern will be much warmer across a lot of the east. That's Fox meteorologist Rick Reichmuth. Much of the warmth is in the west. Today's high temperature in Phoenix could reach 98 degrees. I'm Pam Puso, and this is Fox News. Southbound Southfield Freeway is closed due to an accident at Warren. And if you're going southbound 275, the traffic starts to get pretty heavy between the M14 I-96 exit and 696. If you're headed northbound on the lodge, look out for another crash blocking the left shoulder at Telegraph Road. If you're in downtown Detroit this afternoon, the Tigers are hosting the Indians. First pitch is at 1.10 p.m. I'm Lorenzo Ware, WJR Traffic and Weather First. A warming trend will take place this week and it will be cloudy initially and then a few peaks of sun into the afternoon with a high of 62 will be windy. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 36, then a sunny and warmer Easter tomorrow with a high of 68. 
from the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr on Newstalk 760 WJR. You're laughing and learning with the Inside Outside Guys on News Talk 760 WJR. Here's Inside Guy Chuck Bridenstine and the Outside Guy Ken Calverly. 888-654-GUYS is the number you can call if you want to talk to the guys in the next hour here. We are uh, actually Glover. Oh, We need to talk to him a bunch. <laughs> There's we, a lot of information there. We have a lot more to talk to Jeff about. He is absolute um, expert in Michigan, and I love what he said. You know, he can help you here in Royal Oak, and he can help you in Grand Rapids. Wherever you need help in Michigan, 855 Jeff Sells or um, Jeff Glover Associates.com. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I totally agree with you, buddy. So, yeah. so our, our article this week was about mulch, Chuck. And we mentioned earlier that I went out and I got all mine. I say 80% I took out of it. Stuff that was embedded in there, I'm going to leave it. Um, but how many other people are doing the same thing around uh, Southeast Michigan? And what kind of advice can we give them when it's time to mulch? You know, it's funny because you mentioned earlier, this is not – uh, typically a do-it-yourself show, but when we talked about our spring walk around a couple of weeks ago, we did indicate to people that they should have two columns in their uh, to-do list. One is things you might do yourself, and others are things that require professional. And mulching could be a do-it-yourself project, right? Oh, absolutely. But absolutely. you got to be careful what you buy. I tell you, you really do have to be careful what you buy. Um, like everything else, you don't want to be the, buy the cheapest stuff out there. Oh. But the one warning I'm going to give people early in the year is when you go to buy the mulch, you could be buying the mulch that's been on the shelf since last year. And oh, you really yeah. got to be careful of that because I can almost guarantee you when you break that bag open, there's going to be mold in there. Yep. You know, it's funny when the whole green movement thing started decades ago, you know, the Mother Earth News uh, intro to being green. You know, they talked about uh, when you trimmed your trees, save the branches, get a chipper, chip those all up and use those as mulch around the house. You and I tend to disagree with that. hundred <laughs> percent. Not, not tend to, but if you want to invite critters, especially black ants and that kind of stuff to your oh. property, that's what, that's what you do. Yeah. Don't put a food and nesting source next to your house for insects. <laughs> hey, well, good advice, Chuck. So in the article, one of the things we stress, if you like a wood mulch, use a, a naturally uh, insect uh, repelling product like a cypress uh, or a cedar and a higher quality cedar is going to have more of those uh, tannins in the wood that yeah. will reject insect infestation. That's and important. let me also add to that where, where, you know, where do the professionals buy their mulch? You know, they buy it at the English gardens or the, the rock shops, um, the, the landscape supply places that they buy in bulk, they buy at a good price, but they buy the right stuff. Um, the landscape supply places have the good quality mulches that, that tend to hold their colors better. Yeah. Fair to say. And yeah. last longer. They don't get as soft and mushy as, as quick. And I'm a big believer in making, uh, you know, whatever mulch you're using a part of the landscape design. So rather than a knee jerk reaction to just putting something down, I think you, you go back to the curb and look at your house again and say, you know, how could how could a mulch enhance the flow uh, of the landscape away from the house, you know, toward the street? Mm -hmm. Could you eliminate some grass and maybe some grass maintenance with with an attractive mulch, you know, that may actually, you know, enhance the looks of your house? So I think all those things need to be taken into consideration. You know, I, I have a lot of area mulch in my front yard and one of them turns into a border next to an existing border on my driveway. I don't have any. Um, clear-cut border. I have no kind of diamond edging in that at all. What I do is this time of year, I, anything where the mulch is going to be, I kill that grass and throughout the year, anything in that area. So I don't use a border in my mulch. Um, so here's what people do. I love your advice. Take a step back, take a look at your house. Don't necessarily want to match your house with the color of mulch you use. No. Um, you want something that's going to accent it more than everything else. Don't be tempted to buy a bag of mulch um, at the local gas station. <laughs> okay, like I said, well, I mean, they're doing that everywhere you go. They got oh, it. and that's that's um, buy it where the professionals buy it. Is that fair to say? I agree with you. It's gonna it's going to last longer. Can we yeah. go to the phones? Can we go to the phones? Absolutely. 
888654 guys equals 888654897. Let's talk to our good friend Tim from Temperance. How you doing, Tim? Good afternoon or good morning, gentlemen. Um, nice article in um, yesterday's Detroit papers on the mulch, and that leads me into something else that was in the home section. Um, first question. If you were going to use the best of the best individual contractors in building a house that are available in the state of Michigan, would a year from now be enough lead time? Um, Probably. Two, two, two names that come to mind. Compo Builders, um, Macomb Construction, and there's other out there. Yes, if you contacted them today, yes, um, it's always uh, – the big question nowadays is a lumber issue. Uh, there has got to be in every contract, Chuck. I know this isn't necessarily your question, but there's got to be a, something in the contract that says if this happens, if lumber goes up. Because, yeah, I think they, they'll be available in a year, um, but pricing is always the big question mark, especially the way inflation is happening right now. Absolutely. Well, yeah. speaking of pricing, um, the other thing I wanted to ask you gentlemen about is the MI Dream Home in yesterday's issue. Um, it was built, I believe, in 2012. Over near St. Joe. Yeah, 10,400 square feet. Um, and they're asking um, $1.44 short of $500 a square foot. Yep. Five plus million, um, I think. I got I, I got a little contest going here with the <laughs> three of us. Um, let's cut that in half. Let's go five thousand two hundred square feet, four bedrooms, four and a half baths, not counting garages or outbuildings. Who's going to come up with the best design, and how much is it going to cost a year from now? Yeah, you know, best design is such a relative term because it, who, who's going to be the adjudicator there? We'll get an architectural professor from one of the universities to judge it. <laughs> Even then, I would suggest it's a biased opinion. Is it best design based on efficient use of materials and space or best design based on what the public, the buying public wants? Or I, tell you, I don't, I don't want to be a judge between someone like McComb Builders and Compo Home because I guarantee you, if you ask any of them, they're going to say we're the best. And, and as they should, they're the best. Well, how about if we get the, the, uh, the, the main guys and those to judge it? I like that. And I like, I'll tell you what, space design is an art form. If you've ever had the chance to deal with someone that's a good space planner, and I don't believe I am, that's one of those things. We, we, we can keep talking about this even after the break. Hey, Tim, we appreciate your call, buddy. We'll talk more about it in just a little while, but thank you very much. You know, one of the things that uh, a bathroom remodeler is going to do is try to make efficient use of the existing space. Maybe you rip out that tub and put in a safe shower that you can live with for the rest of your life. Plus, with the new technologies out there, the walk-in tubs, you know, the, 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 the zero-entry shower floors, they can do more in a small bathroom than they ever could in the past, right, bud? Absolutely. Let's make this next segment the Inside Outside Guys brought to you by Atlas Home Improvement. Hey, this is Darian Bobby, owner of Atlas Home Improvement. Now, Mr. Uh, Greg's, Greg's on with us next. Oh, okay. You know, boy, the question Tim asked, you could explore from so many different perspectives. It just got me going. It's like, I want, you could write an article on it. I could go <laughs> off so many different directions on that. Oh, really my goodness. Could. But I do believe Compo Builders, I mean, we could, Compo Builders with, with the lease, I believe that was in the $400 a square foot. Oh, yeah. 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 So, and what's, and with the new lumber out there, I bet. I mean, a brand new house is going to cost you every bit of what, two fifty, a square oh, foot. Heck. One of our, one of ours now. It, it's funny, Jeff. Again, here's another thing we could talk about forever. But that uh, house in Canton, you know, that uh, you said hadn't been touched <laughs> in, since the seventies. Right. Right. I mean, it's the dirt and the location that drive that. You know, and now, of course, material pricing and labor 
are being heaped on top of that. But but location, location, location is still that big issue. You know, and, and it's it's anyone listening is it's hard. Not we hope people remember um, when the recession hit. You know, I, I, right now, if you have equity in your home, enjoy your home. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> enjoy your home. That's that's where yeah. we're at. But that's where you know. I mean, we both said it. We can right now get a lot more than what we bought our house for. A lot more. But where are you going to move to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where are you going to buy another house? Right. But I love Tim's question. I, I know he's thinking about probably getting started on his dream home next year. Uh, yeah, but by asking us, you know, two of the best builders we know, McComb and Campo, and then trying to judge their two homes would be impossible for us because there'd be so many nuances and new technologies in each one that we would absolutely love. Yeah. I would trust either one of them to build my house, I tell you that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, th I think it's important for the buyer to go to the builder with criteria that they consider to be important to them um, because efficient use of space may not be a priority for some people. Right. right. Yeah. Let's have a sprawling ranch where we have extended hallways leading to secret little places, you know, that effectively use, you know, waste space and materials, but they thrill the buyer. But we, you know what? And we've seen a couple of those, you and I recently, we go in those basements, they're so giant and two people live there. And what are they ever going to do with that space? How can they ever efficiently use that space? It's like, yeah. to me, that's like um, having a bunch of equipment and letting it sit in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> Just go to waste. Yeah. I know it. It's fascinating stuff. So that's a topic we might explore. That's so our, our good friend Victor's will be the next sponsor. Um, yeah. Coming up? Yes, sir. Okay. And then foundation systems. I need more coffee. And tomorrow we're going to do a best of. Is that right, Danielle? Dave? Oh, I got to, oh this here's what I got to ask him. Yes. Good. Everything going good on your side? Yes. How are you guys doing? Good. Fantastic. Thank you. It's working well? Yes. We like it. It, it really is a simple answer to a question we've had for many, many years. You guys see your number scrolling on the bottom? Yeah, we do. Did you Where like we had, did you like Jeff Glover's picture being up and everything like that? Oh, very cool. Okay. Very cool. Look at Chuck, you can, see your, you can see your bionic arm there, Chuck. Yeah, hopefully not for well. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. You're, going, you're going to do surgery Tuesday. Yep. Wow. Okay. I got emails. <laughs> Any idea of you? You have housing questions? The Inside Outside guys on WJR have the answers. Here are Ken and Chuck. Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you being with us. It means everything to us. We want to remind you, though, the price of admission Ken and I have had to charge from day one to make this show work is that you tell everybody you know about the Inside Outside guys, the Inside Outside guys on Facebook, the Inside Outside guys in the uh, Detroit News, and where else, Ken? Well, StreamYard now. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> hey, I want to remind everybody, besides Chuck and I being at uh, Motor City Floors and Coatings in the third hour of the show between noon and one today, Chuck, just about a month from now, we're going to be at a home show, the home show. I know. Finally. I know. How excited are you for that? I'll put on a better shirt. Please do. A better, yeah, yeah <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing. <laughs> No, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that. The uh, Novi Home Show, you know, had to disappear for a little over a year here, but we are getting genuinely excited about the opportunity, hopefully, to be there live and in person uh, the 1st and the 30th, I think it is. That's it. Yep. And the, the, very, uh, the very last day of the month and the very first two of two the Two days, night. yeah. Yes. 30th, 1st, and 2nd. Yeah. Yep. Excited to be there. Hey, yeah, uh, 8 at 8. 654 guys equals 888-654-4897. Let's go to the phones and talk to Greg from Shelby. Greg, how you doing? Hey, good morning, you guys. Mr. Positive's in the house. Hey, <laughs> great, great interview with Jeff Glover. A uh, household name. I see hey, his Jeff. signs everywhere. He's fantastic. Him and Beckman Golf. And I got to give a real quick shout out to my buddy, Ken Walzek. L listens to you guys religiously in Washington. Um, awesome. Hey, the, thank you. Um, the question, uh, what is the best insulation? 
Is it fiberglass? Is it cellulose? Or is it foam? Hit me. Yes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's a good answer. Um, different different you're using using it. Different applications, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. If I were building my my home today, I would okay. love a good cellulose product in the attic. And again, all of these are predicated upon professional installation. Uh, I I love foam spray foam in most of the rest of the home. I, I, I could sell foam. I just think it's a fantastic product. I do. Um, I tell people all the time, you know, the first thing I did when I bought the house I'm in now is I call Ace and Sons Insulation. And they came up and they put a spray foam in the band joists around my house, which is where most of the energy is lost. And uh, then they increased the cellulose sidewall insulation for me from the inside. So, you know, to say which one's the best one, that's like asking which one, you know, which child's your favorite. Um, you good, good analogy there. They're all okay. excellent products used in um, different applications. I think you and I Very would good. always default to cellulose and spray foam uh, over fiberglass in in most installations. Well, fiberglass is a good product. I mean, one thing fiberglass is sold at I think a little bit too much is more of a DIY product. Fiberglass. You can which go one's the least it. toxic? What's that? Which one's the least toxic, uh, maybe, that causes problems with health issues? Which one is the safe, uh, safest? Well, you don't want to go up there and breathe either one of them in, you know. Um, okay, okay, okay. But nowadays, I wouldn't consider either one of them toxic. Would you check? It's a valid question. Um, Thank you. You know, there, there, there's a lot of research that suggests some issues with fiberglass if it's disturbed. I mean, it's a glass mat product. Um, Cellulose is basically a shredded paper product, but it is treated with chemicals for fire retardant and antifungals and those types of things. Okay. Uh, foams used to have issues, especially uh, with allergies, because they would degrade over time and off gas and potentially contaminate the air in the house. Ken and I are going to be doing a show on the science of air here in a few weeks. Actually, there was a lot of the early foam, and a lot yeah. of times they'd put it in, and it would just disappear from the walls. Yeah, UFFI was notorious in some situations for that. You were formaldehyde foam insulation. But today, the, the foams are stable when they're professionally installed. Um, so if I had to pick one over everything, I might say foam, but that would not... Okay be at the exclusion of using the other products. Now that Very being good, said, you guys. Uh, foam is more of a stable product. You think of the ICF, so they're made of foam. You can build entire houses out of foam. You can't do exactly. that out of the other products. So Greg, thank you very much, buddy. Great call, great question as usual. God bless you, Greg. All right, let's see. How much, how much time do we, have? do we have to be out? I think we got time. Yeah, let's, we do. Let's go to Frank and Canton. Good morning, Frank. You're on with the guys on WJR. Back with two of me. You guys do a nice job. You do a nice job. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you very I, much. Uh, oh, surely. And I would need a, a garage door. You had a guy, well, first of all, I tore the garage door up the other day. I need a repair on it. <laughs> and also, I called about a month ago and, or so, and you sent a fellow out. And in this subdivision, you got everybody's got to have the same garage door. You can't modify it. And I said, well, what happens if it's just busted? But we'll deal with that. So I was just wondering, uh, first of all, I need a repair on it. And anybody that you believe that you could send out that would have a big uh, uh, catalog. He went through his catalog. He couldn't find anything that would match the door that's there now. Okay, now, um, he, real quick, here's where we get in trouble for anyone watching on StreamYard. Because when they're not watching it, it just sounds like we know these numbers off the top of our head. And we just we got it. You, you got it, but we actually, we do have to look at it. Oh, yeah, we haven't <laughs> memorized a thousand numbers. Exactly. And exactly. I will promise you, we never will. Who are you going to refer to, buddy? Uh, well, I'm thinking Clarkston Window and Door for a garage door might be a good place to start. Uh, we've got some other people out there that, you know, might specialize, but um, Clarkston is going to have a great selection. They're going to have as big a selection as anybody. Uh, and they also okay. might be able to refer someone for repairs, uh, since obviously they do a lot of installs and a lot of repairs and warranty work, you know, on their own product. If you got a pen handy, we can give you a phone number, Frank. I'm waiting on you. It is 248 338. Yeah, 248 248 338. 
three, three, eight, six, seven, eight, one. Six, seven, eight, one. That's two, four, eight, three, three, eight, six, seven, eight, one. That's Clarkson door, right? Clarkson window and door. Give them a call. Tell them we sent you and see if they can help you. I really appreciate it. I want to tell you guys, you do a nice job, but I, I'll i never build it. You're talking to the 88-year-old goat, you know. God bless <laughs> you. Just Thank, you. To hear. Thank you. But, yeah, it's just nice to hear that because uh, uh, right out now here in Canton, they're putting a big, big uh, new uh, subdivision, and they're just starting to build up at the back in Getty's. And, uh, boy, it, it, I'm wondering, you know, the the government, uh, the way the economy is, uh, but they're getting people going in there buying them. So I guess they are, Frank. whatever it is. But They are, Frank. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for your call. We got, we're up against the great Hey, Here's what you do. You go to uh, victorsroofing.com. You go to the inside outside, guys. You go to victorsroofing.com. You schedule an inspection. They come out there and inspect your house. If you need a new roof, they can give it to you. Who's this next on the inside outside, guys? Sponsored by Victor's Roofing. Hi, it's Paul W. If you need to repair or replace your roof, I recommend you call Victor's Roofing. They've replaced two roofs for me, and I couldn't be happier with How do we know how many people are watching us? Jessica knew. I don't know how she knew. Oh, on our Facebook page, Danielle put a link to get here. Ah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't want to touch my screen. I don't want to mess with anything. You know, I feel the same way, but the more we do this stuff, the more we're going to learn. Yeah, I want to experiment with... Uh, digressing two notes that I've got on the computer. Oh yeah, yeah. Instead of having to print everything. Yeah, and then you yeah, and then you'll have to keep looking down. Why? Yeah. But we found our um, answer to next year's vacation season, didn't we, buddy? Yes, sir. <laughs> next year, this year. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah. And you have internet up at your place there, don't you? Oh yeah. Well, you got the sniffles. I do, darn it. All right. Uh, I don't think there's any cars right now. Talk to the window safety when you get back. Yeah, sounds good.
What is that noise I'm hearing? Oh, there it goes. Just went away. It was you. <laughs> Bring us back, bud. There it is again. I know. Gerbil in the computer. <laughs> Wouldn't be a gerbil. Some kind of um, infection. Whatever the computer term for it is. <laughs> virus. Virus. That's it. In the clouds later today with a high warming to 62 as winds increase out of the south. Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 36, then a sunny and warmer Easter tomorrow with a high of 68. From the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr on News Talk 760 WJR. Here for you today and every day. This is the Inside Outside Guys on WJR. Here are Chuck and Ken. Welcome back, everybody. 888 654 4897. We'd love to hear from you in the balance of the show we've got today. You know, Ken, um, Tim had mentioned price per square foot of that house in St. Joe that was featured in the home style section yesterday. The house is selling for a little over $5 million. It's 10,400 square feet. Um, and he was around 500 bucks a square foot. But I want to make sure people understand. That comes with three acres of land. <laughs> it comes with a separate outlying boat house. It comes with a separate barn and stable and fencing and landscaping and all that good stuff. So when you're doing the simple $500 per square foot, that's not literally the raw cost of the house. That's the cost of the entire uh, piece of real estate and all the amenities you're buying. Um, you can certainly build a house for a lot less than $500 a square foot. <laughs> Oh, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. And you can spend more than that, too, quite honestly. I mean, something as simple as windows, Chuck. I mean, let, let's just put an average out there. You, uh, um, for that house, they could spend, oh, 70, 80,000 for windows, or they can spend 270, 80,000. Oh, absolutely. For windows. And that obviously is going to make a big part is everything top of the line that goes in that house. Oh. Well, when we had Lee Swartz on with us a couple of weeks ago, just the cost of lumber, one of our listeners uh, had mentioned that uh, earlier. The cost of lumber alone has added uh, over $10 a square foot to the cost of just the raw cost of building a house. Um, Do you believe the cost? I mean, if you're a builder, you know, before the lumber started going up, you're thrilled at the price of housing. But do you believe the cost of lumber has, has more equaled out to them once they sell the house because they're getting so much more for the house itself? You know, builders aren't making any more money. Um, if anything, you know, builders are probably taking a little bit of a margin hit because dirt's more expensive, infrastructure's more expensive, labor's more expensive, and then more that, yeah. Yeah, every commodity material has gone up. Right. Yeah, so people are thinking, you know, the builders are getting rich in this economy, and the truth is um, their margins haven't, haven't <laughs> been inflated anywhere near the rate that all these other costs have gone up. You know, I think of golf courses when you say that, because 20 years ago, we were paying probably an average of 50, 60 bucks to play around the golf. Today, we're probably paying an average of 50, 60 bucks to play around the golf. And the, builder, the builders are probably yeah. getting close to the same square footage because they got to keep their guys moving. I mean, their labor, their labor. I mean, everyone knows the labor issue the builders have. And in a perfect world, if we had all the labor and we had um, all the wood at, at the right price, you know, that'd be a perfect world. But we're never in our lifetime going to see all those three mesh together, Chuck, where, um, where, where, where it's going to go smooth and perfect. Yeah. So, and this is the perfect price storm. Exactly. Uh, and everybody gets hit with it. But you mentioned windows, and I didn't mean to get off on a tangent. I apologize. Um, the uh, 4th through the 10th of this month is window safety week. And you and yeah. I agreed. Was it last week where you and I were chatting about that, how important it is? It is. You know, and I was reading an article because we, we, we said we're going to talk about this. I was reading an article from the American Academy of Pediatrics. 
that an average of 12 children in the U.S. a year die from falling out of windows and over 5,000 injuries. Um, and a lot of that are, are really preventable. I mean, most of those are preventable injuries and preventable deaths. So yeah. um, everyone knows that we're, um, we're family men. And if we can take a second and uh, help people uh, make us aware, bring it to the front of their consciousness, especially if they have children or grandchildren, we're going to take a minute and do that now. You know, our article that we'll have next week uh, starts with a story uh, that's very close to you and I, a good friend of ours, grandson, a few years ago, I think he was eight years old at the time, fell out of a second story window and sounds crazy. Luckily, he landed on top of the family car uh, and shattered both of his arms. Right. But had that car not been there, another four feet of acceleration, he would have hit concrete and I can't even, I don't want to consider, you know, right. what that, how that story would have ended. Right. And it's preventable. Now, here's the thing. You can, you can install, you know, you can retrofit to your existing windows uh, restrictors. So if it's a double hung, you know, where you raise the lower sash or if it's a crank out, you know, where you crank and slowly open the sash, uh, you can actually buy restrictors to retrofit those. But the caveat here is if that's a bedroom window and it becomes the secondary means of egress. <laughs> there you go using those terms again, Chuck. <laughs> well, you know, the law says in a sleeping area, in a bedroom, you must have a second means of coming in or going out. Escaping for yeah, egress. A driveway is a means of egress. You can come in, you can go out. Uh, a big door is a means of egress. You can come in, you can go out. So the doorway into the bedroom is the first means or primary means of egress. A window is typically the second one that meets specific criteria. If you put restrictors on the openings for that window such that it can no longer function as a means of egress, you may have solved one problem. Your child is never going to fall out of the window. But now in an emergency, could a fireman come in through that window or could you or your child exit through that window? So it is a, a you know, kind of a quandary for homeowners and parents in particular. Is during this week, do you believe people should take a little, um, take a look at their windows and, and look at they need any maintenance and if they do need maintenance, because we've, we've all seen the windows where you try to lift it up and the spring's gone, you let go, it slams back down. Some <laughs> people may have that issue where it's, and, and, how many times have you lifted a window and heard the spring go? Okay, so if you, you have a, a room in your house where you never open that window, and I mean never, um, you may want to go to those windows and open those up a couple of times and down, see how they feel. You know, I told a story years ago when you and I got started here. I, I used to do home inspections, and I was doing an inspection on a home in Grand Blanc, which is where I am right now, and it was an upper-end ranch. It was a beautiful brick ranch, and the couple had been the original occupants of the home, and they were going to sell it. And one of the things I realized is that several the casement windows, several of the windows you could not operate. They literally wouldn't open. They were jammed shut because of some other issues. And I went to them after the inspection and I put them on notice. I said, do you ever open your windows? And the husband looked at the wife and, and the wife looked at the husband and they said, I don't think we've opened a window since the, in the 20 years we've lived in this home. They live by their thermostat. <laughs> So they didn't even know they couldn't open them. So I agree with you that it's not a bad idea to go around and check and see. And take a look. Hey, egress windows. Let's get back to the uh, the windows in just a second. Let's take yeah. a phone call. Let's talk to Carol from Utica. Good morning, Carol. You're on with the Inside Outside Guys on WJR. Hi, I love your show. Um, I have two questions regarding my shower. It's a small shower. And it's enclosed by ceramic tile, and the opening is ceramic tile. Um, the first question is, I want to replace the shower door, but it's a not a standard size. It's a smaller door. So um, where would you suggest I go to? I don't know. I guess I have to go custom. I don't yeah. know what to do. Rochester Mirror and Glass is not far from you. And you said the magic word is custom. If it's an odd size, what we call in the industry a bastard size that, that, that isn't out there on a shelf somewhere, then a company like Rochester Mirror and Glass is going to have to make it for you. 
Okay. All right. Great. I'll check them out. The second question is the caulk around the bottom of the shower is um, cracking and it's on a slab. The shower's on a slab. And um, how would we do that? Do, can we just caulk over the pre existing caulk or do we have to take the caulk out? Any professional that caulks over existing caulk cannot be called a professional. <laughs> but many, many homeowners caulk over existing caulk. Our advice would be don't caulk over existing caulk. Um, caulk in a lot of ways, as long as it's not a, a plastic or a soft material, it's not that tough to get out with the right tools. Do you agree, Chuck? I agree with you. She used the term cracking, and my brain said grout, even though she also said caulk. Yes. Is it grout or caulk? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking it's grout because it goes up the side of the shower also. Um, I guess I... It, well, actually, it feels kind of plasticky. Carol, what's your shower made of? What's the interior of the shower made of? Is it tile or is it a uh, insert? It's tile. Okay, then it's most likely grout. Most likely grout. Yeah, okay. and, and the best thing we would do would be uh, to try to match that grout. And even if it is caulk, um, the grout doctor out of Troy is a, a great option. He can come in and match whatever grout you have. If you have caulk in your shower and you have tile, when he's done, I don't think you're going to need caulk in your shower anymore. Do you agree, Chuck? Yeah. Yeah. If it's properly grouted, then the caulk should be a, a moot point. Shouldn't even be a part of the consideration. Absolutely. A caulk in a shower and a tile shower is usually put in there to um, try to fix a crack um, quickly. Usually a Band-Aid. Yeah, Band-Aid. That's the way. Yeah. So would you like a number, Carol? Okay. I, I told. Sure. <laughs> the grout doctor is 248-358-7383. Hey, I, I told my husband he can't grout over grout, but he did not, or talk over grout, but he didn't believe me. So I will tell him what you said. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for listening. Greatly appreciate it. We appreciate okay, it, thank Carol. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. What, yeah. I went fast yeah. one, more, one more segment left of the inside outside, guys. And Chuck, if you looked at the calendar, this week, this past week was cold, but it was sunny. Um, next week, it is warm, but wet. In the calendar, it looks like we're getting a lot of rain this week. So we want people to keep an eye on their system, their basement systems, right? Absolutely. And if you want a free inspection on that basement system, call Foundation Systems of Michigan. Have you experienced? See my my ADD or whatever you call it goes crazy because I don't want to take too long to go to a break, but I also hate going to break and hearing the music playing and playing and playing as well. I just block it out. I mean, we were told forty five, and it's it just now turned forty five. Well, you know what is that's one thing I don't have is I got to keep my. Uh, my mouse browser all the way up to keep the time that I can see. If I don't, I can't see the time. So we got Bruce coming up next from Grand Blank. How how about Frank? We skipped over him, or was that from before? That was from before. Okay. Yeah, we got we, yeah we got Frank. Uh, yeah. Why don't we come back and just talk a couple of quick tips for Windows, and then go to Bruce? What do you think? Yeah, sounds okay. good. And then we can talk about Max and Rob and uh, best of tomorrow. And let's take a couple seconds to thank um, Jeff and maybe mention his site and everything else again at the end. There's that mouse again. And as soon as, you start talking, as soon as you start talking, it goes away. Strange.
So if you minimize your StreamYard screen, will you disconnect? Will you break the connection? Uh, I don't think so. No, not, not if you just minimize it, you shouldn't. That's weird. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I know it did. I know it did. That's weird. Good call on uh, that last referral, by the way. Rochester, Mirror Glass. Partly cloudy to low of 36, then a sunny and warmer Easter tomorrow with a high of 68. From the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr on Newstalk 760 WJR. Find professional contractors you can trust at InsideOutsideGuys.com. Now, once again, here are Ken Calverly and Chuck Bridenstine. Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you being with us today. I want to remind you that we're going to stick around between the 12 and 1 o'clock hour with uh, Max and Rob from Motor City Floors and Coatings. We absolutely are. We're going to have a great time. We always have a great time with Max and Rob. They're two high energy guys who have, I mean, they, they remind us a lot of the guys at Amnesty as well. You know, a couple of guys that are, are taking on the world and winning. And yes. we, we just love to see it because they're doing it with um, hard work, honesty, and ethics. Um, and, and what more could you want? Hard work is everything, isn't it, buddy? Yes, sir. <laughs> got us where we are today. Hey, uh, <laughs> in just a second, we're going to go to Bruce and Brad Blank, but we wanted to take just a couple more seconds to talk about the window safety issue before we go to break. Because, like we said, um, on an average of 12 children die a year from falling out of windows, but 5,000 injuries a year. And something as simple as knowing them, what room to put them in, at what age. I mean, me, when my kids were young, we always kept them on the, on the lower floor with, you know, of the house. And once they got to be, you know, three, four, five, I was able to take them up there and talk to them about window safety. And we did not have the ladder like we should have had, um, but people should have those ladders for safety. Um, but any other tips you can think of that people can uh, tell their children or, or talk to the, their family and friends about to make sure that they're not part of this statistic? Yeah, I think what you just said, you talk to them. I think you develop, develop a plan as a family. And it's kind of like the, uh, idea of water safety you know it's never too kids are never too young right. to start with that indoctrination you, know, you say well my child's only two years old they won't get it and i would say to you i've been a parent for a long time and i would disagree <laughs> that you start very quickly very early chuck that's a perfect analogy used with the pool because we're coming to that we just talked about that a week or two ago exactly. about the, a pool safety show um because my kids had pools pools growing up and my my youngest daughter was in the pool with me two weeks after she was born on a mm -hmm. regular on a regular basis, and I'm very confident any of my kids fall into um, water right now that's you know not freezing cold or they don't hit their heads they're going to be able to get themselves out of it for the for the, for the most part absolutely. So when it comes to window safety, let, you know we say it, if, if something happens to your child, someone's not if someone happens to something happens to a child in a window, someone didn't do their job whether that's the adult at home or someone who made the window, whatever it may be. So by talking to them now, um, you may be able to prevent that. And There's do a quick check. Are they operable easily <laughs> without specialized tools or instructions? Um, that's huge. You mentioned the, you know, springs and counterweights breaking in some of the old double hung units. Uh, does that sash become a guillotine, you know, when it's open and could it fall and, and uh, someone uh, exiting the window and possibly create greater injury. Right, right. You know, that's a big concern. In today's technology, you mentioned the stoppers earlier. Don't even have to Google it. I know there are stoppers that if they hit, an alarm will go off. You can put those in your kids in, in your kids' room where they can alert your phone or wherever it may be that the window's open to a certain height. I think that's probably the best thing you do with kids because again, you don't want to risk disabling and a potential means of egress. So that, but yeah, so I like the alarm. I think the alarm is a great idea. 
most people don't consider that other means of egress and they will literally put screws or nails to stop the kids windows from being able to open to a certain height. Yes. We promised Bruce would get to him real quick from Grand Blank before the show's over. Bruce, you there, my friend? Yes, I am. How can we help you, sir? How can we help you, Bruce? Well, we have a 15 year old ranch built on a ridge with a walkout and the deck uh, frost over the years has heaved the deck up to a point where uh, I've got to take care of it. And then I'm trying to find somebody here in Grand Blank that can fix my problem. What do you, what do you see as the problem? Just that it's moved? Sounds to me like foundation was not poured. No. No, no, the posts are below the frost line. And being on a ridge, we didn't think there'd be a water problem or something. But in the wintertime, uh, up until recently, you could hear crack as that thing was pushed out of the ground. The poles are being pushed right out of the ground about six inches. Okay. Well, bear in mind, frost line is a relative term. Uh, while the code says 42 inches, it is a minimum number. And every situation, you know, demands that you treat it differently. If you're going to stop that heaving problem, you've got to reestablish a lower frost line <laughs> for those posts. And then maybe make sure you're not uh, channeling surface water anywhere approximate to those posts. So in a few minutes we have left, what sounds needs to be done is the existing um, patio needs to be braced and stabilized and then either dig and pour a new post or get down around that existing post and stabilize it that way. Yeah, that's you know probably the least right. yeah. alternative if everything else is in good shape is to literally uh, excavate a parallel hole uh, next to those posts. And what you could do is temporarily crib and, and support the deck and then maybe use a 10A stone or poured concrete underneath the bottom of the post to extend the frost line deeper. But it sounds to me like you keep saying you, um, like he, he, I'm sorry, Bruce is not gonna wanna do this himself. You're looking for a pro to help you, buddy? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you think, Joel? Yeah, I, I think that that type of work might be really good for Joel at Just Ask. If you got a pen handy, we can give you a phone number. Check it out, Bruce. I'm ready. It's 248-535-1759. Okay. Thank you very what much. You, Bruce, you need to extend the frost line lower. If you can, you know, you'd like to have maybe some 10A stone around the base of that hole so that if water does get down there, it can expand into the stone rather than pushing the posts up. Yeah, yeah, I figured I had to support the deck and then put the pylons deeper. Yeah, at one at one point you may have you may have had forty two inches, but it sounds like you might have had some erosion and lost some earth, and that's involved. But hey, Bruce, um, let us know how no. it goes, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay, in a couple minutes we have left, Chuck. Let's remind people we're going to be at um, the Spring and Garden Show in Novi at the end of this month. People are going to hear us talk about that a lot over the next month. We're first, super, second, or thirtieth and first and second, right? Super excited about that yeah. and to see everybody again. Really am. Um, want to thank Jeff Glover from JeffGloverAssociates.com and eight five five Jeff Sells. Uh, if you you're going to hear a lot more from Jeff Glover on the inside outside guys as yeah. time goes by because to have an expert like him, we are definitely going to take advantage of it. Yes, sir. And then, of course, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns tomorrow during the week, InsideOutsideGuys.com. And you and I are going to be continuing from 12 to 1 with Motor City Floors and Coatings. Hey, let's, let's zoom over to Motor City Floors and Coatings and talk to Max and Rob. It's a great show. Great guys. There'll be a lot of laughs and a lot of learning as well. Hey, everybody out there. Hey, partner. Have a happy Danielle Dave studio. Thank you so much for making this so smooth for us for, for first timers. And have a happy, blessed day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Don't forget, during the week, the InsideOutsideGuys.com, the Inside Outside Guys on Facebook because... From the roof to the basement, the street to the back fence. If you need it, the Inside Outside guys are here for you today and every day. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll be talking to you right after the top of the hour.
Thanks, everyone. Hey, Gary here with MI Remodelers, the Integrity Guys. We are a full service interior and. Well, very few hiccups. I think.